ability doing two-stage or compound events with tables. So an experiment can consist of a compound event, uh, sorry, event, that is where you do two separate things like tossing two dice or selecting two people from a group or flipping a coin twice. Um, so compound events are events with multiple stages. And we need to be able to look at the probability involved in these. We often use a table to show the sample space, and that's what this one is about. So we do need to talk about the concept of whether the events are with or without replacement. So we're doing the example of we're choosing a letter from the word tree. And there's a couple of different things I want to talk about. Firstly, we choose the, the, the compound event will be you choose one letter and then you choose another letter and the question is are you putting the first letter back before you choose the second one so if I choose a letter randomly and let's pretend it's random and I don't put it back then what's left has changed my options have changed and the possible probabilities have changed but if I do put it back for the second one then I can still choose it again for the th for the second choice and so probabilities will remain the same. So with and without replacement is whether you put that item back in. Now some events like um, rolling a die or tossing a coin um, have to be with replacement. So with replacement is basically just the exact same outcome can happen twice in both once in each event. Um, but in some situations, you can't have replacement. So if you're two, choosing two people from a group to do two separate jobs and they can't both choose the same, do the same job, then once you've chosen the first person, they're out of the running. And so it is important that we know whether our events are happening with or without replacement. Now the other reason I chose the word tree is that it has two E's in it, and that's why I've made one E pink. There are two different ways of choosing an E. There are not three different outcomes, there's four. T, R, this E, or that E. So, two letters are chosen from the word tree, Create tables showing the sample space with and without replacement. So our with replacement is the easier one, of course. Our first letter generally goes up the top. It wouldn't matter if it was first and then second. But once you've chosen, the order matters because TR is a different outcome to RT. So my different outcomes that are possible are TREE. -E, and then my second letter will go down here and my different outcomes are T, R, E, E. Now, if I chose a T for my first letter, that goes in this column, but because it's with replacement, it's still quite possible to get a T for the second letter. So my possible outcomes are T, sorry, T. Here it's R for the first one, T. E for the first one. Okay? So we just fill in our table being quite careful to keep first, then second in order. Uh, you may find it easier to work down the page, T, E.
So see we're getting quite a lot of double E's here. First letter, second letter. So that is with replacement. Without replacement, we still have our first letter and our second letter. And we still have the options of T-R-E-E -E, and we still have T-R-E-E -E as our options here. Because what we then need to do is say, all right, if our first letter was T, great. Now, for the second letter, <coughs> excuse me, T is no longer an option. I cannot get T, T. But I can get T, R, T, E, or T, E. But the reason I still put all the T, R, E, E in here is because what if R was my first letter? Then I could get R, T, but I couldn't get R, R. I could get R, first E, or I could get R, second E. So you'll notice how we're crossing off getting exactly the same thing twice because we can't because we didn't put it back. If I got the blue E first, I could get E, T, E, R. I couldn't get that E, E, but I could get blue E and then pink E. And of course, if I got the pink E first, I wouldn't be able to get pink E, pink E, but I could get E, T, E, R, or E, E, that way. And notice that these are not outcomes. So they're not part of the sample space at all because they can't happen. So there's fewer possible outcomes without replacement than with. So if we have a look at some of these questions, for each scenario, find the total number of possible outcomes. Now you'll notice, with replacement, there were four outcomes possible for the first one, four outcomes possible for the second one, four times four is 16. There's 16 possible outcomes. Without replacement, there's three possible on each row there, or, base, or another way of thinking about it, there's four letters available for the first letter, but then there's only three letters available for the second. Four times three, that's 12 outcomes. Or we could just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But the number of outcomes in the first event times the number of outcomes in the second event gives me the total number of possible outcomes. Now for finding probability, we can just count up the number of successful outcomes from the table. So the probability of getting two E's. There's one, two, three, four, where I can get two E's. Out of a total of 16, you always simplify your fractions, so that's one quarter. Without replacement, there's only two ways of getting two E's out of a total number of outcomes, which is 12, so that's 1 -sixth. Simplify, leave in fraction form. The probability of at least one E. Now, at least one E says one or more. That is, if I said you pass if you got at least one E for excellent, um, two would be fine. None would not be fine. So just you learn the language there. How many of them have at least one E? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 in this one. 12 out of 16. Simplifying that down, of course, to 3 out of 4. Probability of at least one E here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 out of 12. 12 simplifying that down to 5 over 6. Always leave in fraction, simplified form. Now, it is worth noting that you don't need these tables. We didn't need it to find out the number of possible outcomes, and we don't need it to find out the probability of a compound event. It is actually easier for these at least questions to use the table, but very quickly, just looking for 
only one um, definite event, because there were, there were several different outcomes that could have been at least one E, but EE is nice and easy. The probability of a compound event, with a couple of caveats which we don't need to go into in year nine, is equal to the product times of the separate events probabilities. So with replacement, the probability of the first E was two out of four. And the probability of the second E was two out of four. And I'm leaving these as unsimplified fractions just because it will make it a little bit more obvious, but you could simplify them, absolutely. Probability of getting the first E and then the second E is 2 over 4 times 2 over 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Excuse me, 4 times 4 is 16, which is exactly the probability that we got when we counted up the outcomes. And that simplifies to 1 over 4. Excuse me, my asthma is playing up. Give me a minute. <coughs> I do apologize. Without replacement, the probability of the first E, there's my tree, was 2 out of 4 still, because nothing had changed. But then, without replacement, that's gone away. The probability of the second E was 1 out of 3. The probability of getting the first E, then the second E, is 2 out of 4 times 1 out of 3. 2 times 1 is 2. 4 times 3 is 12. And 2 out of 12 is exactly what we got. We simplify it to 1 out of 6. So you do not actually need the table to work out the number of outcomes or the probabilities, but you do need to be able to make the table and it will help if you're at all stuck. <coughs>